I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because God is at my right hand. I shall not fall. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 to 18. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same, the same gift that he gave us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Here ends the reading. Blessed Friday evening to you on this feast of Cornelius the Centurion. Sometimes when we're confused about what to do and what not to do, we need to reduce the confusion to a basic question. What is the one thing that I should not do? In the medical profession, even physicians know the dictum, first, do no harm. In this evening's text, the Apostle Peter is confronted by irritated Jewish friends and fellow believers who do not understand why he was sharing the gospel with Gentiles. The text says that when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. Even so, they didn't criticize him for sharing the gospel with non-Jews. Indeed, such explicit contempt would instantaneously be recognized for what it truly is, vile ethnic pride. Rather than initiate a direct assault on the Jewish newcomers, they launched an attack on Peter's character, claiming it was his conduct that troubled them. On the surface, the circumcised believers weren't disturbed by the inclusion of Gentiles into God's kingdom. Instead, they questioned Peter's loyalty to one of the cherished Jewish traditions. Accordingly, they posed the following question. Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them. Whether by revelation or reason, or maybe some combination of both, Peter sensed the need for clarity in the situation and the urgency of the moment. So Peter got up and starts preaching a four to six point sermon that includes a great personal story. Peter began to explain it to them 
step by step, as we're told in verse 4. Having identified the participants who stood behind this disagreement, Acts writer Luke then offers a synopsis of the events that ultimately led to the conversion of Cornelius in verses 5 through 17. While there are some minor differences, the summary does not deviate much from Acts 10 in any substantive way. So there in Jerusalem, in the midst of his circumcised brothers, Peter reached the culmination of his account and humbly asked, If then God gave them the same gift that God gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was it that I was to hinder God? This query not only confirms that the Lord was directing the initial outreach to the nations, but also indicts the circumcised believers. After these men heard Peter's step-by-step -step explanation and understood that they were complicit in opposing God's will, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Peter's message explained, step-by-step, -step, to the believers that they should not hinder God. If God wants us to love the stranger, who are we to hinder God? If God wants us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, who are we to hinder God? If God wants us to repay evil with blessing, who are we to hinder God? We must daily practice our calling and continue step by step with God. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by your Holy Spirit. We continue our prayer with the collect for the feast of Cornelius the Centurion. O God, who by your Spirit called Cornelius the Centurion, to be the first Christian among the Gentiles. Grant to your church such a ready will to go where you send and to do what you command, that the prejudices that blind us might cease and that we might welcome all who turn to you in love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in these times of many calamities. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of fires, protests, and viruses, we flee to you for succor. Deliver the people we beseech you from their peril. Give strength and skill to those who minister to the needy. Prosper the means of their safety and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we all may apply our hearts unto your heavenly wisdom, which leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for those who struggle with addictions. 
O blessed Lord, you ministered to all who came to you. Look with compassion on all who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove from them the fears that beset them. Strengthen them in the work of their recovery. And to those who care for them, give patient understanding and persevering love. Amen. Let us pray for those who suffer from mental illness. O Heavenly Father, look with your love on all your children who are living with mental illness. Bless them with kindness and patience. Give them true friends who understand them and knowledgeable therapists with competence and compassion. Soothe their worries, lift their spirits, help them to trust others, quiet their negative thinking, help them care for themselves and give them peace. Through the infinite mercy of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, let us pray for God's presence for us as we rest this night. Lord, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in the scriptures and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose, mercy, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the Church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. You all have a good evening, and thank you for joining me.